Today in Make and Drink, we're doing the Ultimate Mai Tai from ultimatemaitai.com. If you've not come across ultimatemaitai.com, it is one of the best, it is probably the best resource if you're uh, maybe researching the history of the Mai Tai, maybe you're planning to do um, an extremely long um, video or recap of the total history of the Mai Tai. There's great resources for that, including Trader Vic's own words in Trader Vic's books, the official accounts for the Trader Vic's website, Smuggler's Cove, Jeff the Beach Bumberry, but all of those things kind of together, including a lot more that you probably didn't know about, including all of the different recipes, how the recipe goes to Hawaii and what happens there, that is all covered on ultimatemaitai.com. The website is the creation of Kevin Crossman, who is on the journey to find the ultimate Mai Tai. And if you follow people on social media or you follow them on their blog, I don't know if there's anyone in the world who has gone out into the world and had more Mai Tais. Maybe, maybe there's one or two, but no one that documents them as well as Kevin Crossman. We are entering the, the territory of the Mai Tai where we are not fundamentally changing it with syrups and juices. This is the fine tweaking stage. And this one is a very familiar 1944 Mai Tai, but if you were to make this, it's gonna taste uh, much different because of the orgeat we use, because of the orange curacao I'm gonna put in this, and most importantly, because of this unique rum blend. Now, if you wanna be legit, you get yourself a bottle here and you make your own ultimate Mai Tai rum blend. But if you don't have any of these bottles or maybe you have a couple of them and you don't wanna combine them into one, what you're gonna to need to make the ultimate Mai Tai are four different rums. The first rum is Appleton 12, which is gonna bring in a little bit of those Jamaican characteristics, but it is not a 100% pot still rum. It is a blend, so it's a little bit more approachable and we get 12 years of aging here. This is my favorite rum. I think for most people, I shouldn't say most, but maybe a lot of people that are really into rum, this is for many of them and, and for me, like the first rum that really got me more into rum. It has that unique characteristic and quality that you're looking for, but it's not overpowering or funky. The next rum you'll need is Plantation Zymaka, which is a 100% pot still rum from Plantation. This is one of, I think, I mean, from my experience, the most approachable, easygoing, 100% pot still Jamaican rum out there. So you're getting that sort of uh, notes of that funkiness and that Jamaican characteristic, but it's not, you know, too intense that you're not going to enjoy it. Next is Smith and Cross, which does bring in that sort of Jamaican funk. And when I think about Jamaican rums, one of the things that always comes to my mind now are the words of Trader Vic's. And if you look through Trader Vic's books, he talks about whiskeys, he talks about gin, he talks about rum, but the sort of category and region that he spends the most time on is Jamaican rum. And the words he uses are pungent flavor. And I always think about that. It's the same thing to me as funky, but this has that pungent flavor. Now, some of you who are like super into rums, you might not find this to be too funky. I think it is. And I think in a half ounce quantity, it works perfectly in most mixed drinks. Last, but most certainly not least, is OFTD, which is an overproof rum at 69% ABV. So it's not quite at a 151, but it's close. It'll catch on fire if you need it to. But this is gonna bring that extra ABV, it's just more flavor. I like to think of this as well as Hamilton 151. Instead of funk bombs, they're like flavor bombs. These are gonna add an intense amount of flavor to your cocktail. So either make your own bottle of the ultimate Mai Tai rum blend or just use half an ounce of each. And we're gonna start by building this in a small shaker tin with one ounce of fresh lime juice. Half an ounce of orgeat, I'm using Latitude 29, that's what the recipe calls for. A quarter ounce of a demerara syrup. It's called for BG Reynolds or Liber, but I make my own. It's just a two to one demerara syrup using only demerara sugar. Half an ounce of orange curacao. Kevin calls for Pierre Ferrand or Clement Creole Chub. I like Clement Creole Chub better, so I'm gonna use that. two ounces of the ultimate Mai Tai blend or a half an ounce of each of those rubs. Add some crushed or nugget ice and then shake this.
open port into a Mai Tai or rocks glass. Top it with more crushed ice and garnish with a sprig of mint and a lime shell. And there you go. It's the ultimate Mai Tai from ultimatemaitai.com. All right, let's try the ultimate Mai Tai. And the first thing to note is it's a rum forward Mai Tai. Now there is you know, more sweetness there than normal, but that's pretty much working well here because of those strong Jamaican rums. If you were using a lighter rum here or a split base Jamaican and Puerto Rican rum, I think it would be too sweet. But with that Smith and Cross, with the Plantation Zymaka, with the OFTD, that sweetness helps kind of tone this down just a little bit. And the thing that is so unique about that rum blend is you can taste, I mean, all those rums, if you're familiar with those rums, they all come through, even though you're just using half an ounce of each one. And I don't wanna say that this is an advanced Mai Tai, but I don't think it's for people who aren't familiar with Mai Tais. This is something maybe you sort of level up to. It's not intense Jamaican funk. It's not like if you use only Smith & Cross, but it's getting you closer to that than a lot of the Mai Tais you'll find at Trader Vic's or from you know the island Mai Tais, which use half Puerto Rican rum. It's it's just difficult to make the Mai Tai better. What we're doing is we're just tweaking things to preferences. So this, the ultimate Mai Tai, is the preference Kevin Crossman. The tropical standard Mai Tai, that's you know the preference of Garrett Richard. And then the one coming up next, that's that's another preference, but they're all wonderful. And, and there's not gonna be one that is, you know, appreciably better than the other one. It's really about preference. What's really cool about the ultimate Mai Tai rum blend is it kind of gives you a permission, I think, or maybe just inspiration to try your own Mai Tai blends. And that's something I've been trying for like the last six months to kind of make my own that's a little more uh, simplistic. And it, it's just a great way if you want to experiment on your own with Mai Tais, try changing up the rums you're using. Try doing more than just two and seeing how that turns out and seeing if it really makes a difference. Do those four rums all come through? I think in this one, absolutely but you might try it with four rums that you like and find that it's totally different. So there you go. It's the ultimate Mai Tai. It is as good of a Mai Tai as you're ever gonna have. Put it up on the Mai Tai board. Just a couple more Mai Tais to go during Mai Tai month. This one, ultimate Mai Tai. I will leave a link to ultimatemaitai.com if you wanna look at the recipe there and uh, learn a little bit more about how Kevin Crossman landed on this blend and these ingredients here. So that's it for this one. I'm Derek, this is Making Drink. If you enjoyed the ultimate Mai Tai, give this video a like below and consider subscribing to the channel. And otherwise, I'll see you on the next one.